Alrighty, no one's here, but ooh, here we go. Hey mate, Boxer, how are you going? How are you mate? Good, good. This, hope, uh, you got, hope you got an appointment. I think so. I think so. This looks awesome. Pretty cool, eh? Let's uh, let's start in here. Yeah. And actually, I'm just having a look at this whiteboard here. Yep. So you got a bit this, of work on you. Yeah. Well, as as you know, Mark, we do all the engines for all the Gen Three supercars in in supercars, all the Ford engines. Yep. So this basically gives us a, a breakdown of what engines in what car, that the number of the engine, like it's got its own HP build number, etc. How many kilometres they've done, etc., etc. So we can keep a track after each time they're going out, what mileage they've done so we can maintain servicing and so forth. Nice. Mm. Well, what's in door number one? Yeah, well, this is our main engine room in here. This is um, where we've done most of the angle, nearly all the engines in this room and the other room beside us here, where we've done all the engines for the Gen 3 supercars. So it's a bit of a bit of a shame that we couldn't have done this a month ago because we had like 20 odd engines floating around. Under here, I don't even know what's under here. Cas, what? There we go. So this is a, this will be another another supercar engine, another Gen 3 supercar engine that just buttoned up. Um, I think this is a, another spare engine that we've, we're putting together, or maybe for a wild card that might may happen down down the line. Yep. So, um, so this is build number 25. So okay, yeah. So pretty pretty cool looking thing. And now, basically, for the people who don't know, like what's the origins and and what's the the, the whole idea of the ho that this whole thing is. It's your basic Mustang configuration. Yep. Same engine that you go and buy a, a 2023 Mustang, it has this engine in it. Okay. The, the only varying factor is we do sort of call on Ford performance and Ford for some hot rod bits and pieces. So, but we base it off a 5.2 block. Yep. So in in the US they have the um, the Shelby GT500, which is a supercharged Mustang. So we use that block. We use the cylinder heads. From that same engine, which are CNC base cylinder head, we run some camshafts, which are different configuration camshaft for the supercharged ones. Obviously, we have our own crankshaft made for it, own rods, so it's stroked to 5.4. We have Marl make us a special piston for it. It's got a lot of its its very unique components in it, but it basically is. If you look at it, the configuration is what you go and buy from a Mustang. It even runs this. We'll show you an engine over here in a minute, which is basically the standard GT. Uh, or the Mac One or the Bullet intake manifold with throttle body. Yeah. So uh, it's a pretty, a pretty amazing thing. It, it's dry sumped. And I guess, but the cool thing is now is that, like, unlike previously Gen Two and that, this is a road car engine essentially. Is, yeah, and it's it, it's all built out of production parts. And what, one of the most um, interesting things about the whole deal is we weigh every component as we're assembling engines. So every engine has its own log. Yep. We will we'll weigh valve springs bolts, nuts, whatever. The most amazing thing about this whole engine because it's production, the majority of production engine parts, nearly every, nearly every engine weighs within a few grams of each other. Yeah, well. And it's amazing, like to add it all up, and we, we've got another another one out the back where we weigh the com complete engine, to say they're all within a gram or two of each other. Yeah, where, where in previous generations, you would never get that. Because mm. the blocks were lightened, or they were this, or they were that, and another bit. This is all, one thing, yep, and it all weighs pretty much the same. Yeah, brilliant. Mm. So, so, uh, and so, so this one a, here, this, this is, is a one... this is a complete engine. Yeah, this is um, this is just an engine that's back for some for some servicing. So it basically runs. This is the same inlet manifold you'll get on a, on, a, on a Mac One standard Ford throttle body. So it runs a 87 mil throttle body. Um, there's a lot of bits and pieces that we make. Our own fuel rails, which which hold the MoTeC ignition system, little things that block off bits and pieces, just to make it look neat. Yep. Um, we block off the, the variable runners, and I guess um, as far as life expectancy and, and mileage out of these things, yeah. What um what have you found now with these new engines? And now that obviously Ryko are the filtration partners. Yeah, and, and Ryko have been a great help to us here, like working hand in hand with everything we've done with these filters. It, it's just phenomenal. Um, we believe these engines will see around 10,000 k's. It's mid-service life about 5,000 k's. Yep. We like to see the oil and filter drain a change at each round, obviously. But um, so far, the things have, have been very, very reliable. We've had uh, engines on a dyno, uh, what they call an AVL dyno, at Ford in the US doing durability testing, and you know we've got, we've sort of done like 
plus 5,000 k's non-stop without any issues at whatsoever. So, and yeah, on that as well, Rob, like this air filter here, I mean, yep. seeing that working in the lab and talking to Alistair and the crew there, and people don't realise how much dust and crap that can go into a car, especially if you're following somebody through. Correct. You know, somebody puts a wheel in the dirt or something like that. I mean, how detrimental is that to an engine if it's getting past that? It's going to destroy it, isn't it? Mm. You know, and like so far, with all the testing we've done with the prototype vehicle and stuff, we've seen no deterioration mm. at all through using these filters. In the past, we had like a panel type filter, which we had to oil and so forth. It got messy and horrible. Like, have a look at this thing. Mm. Like, just, just to look at it, it's bloody awesome, I reckon. Oh, and you know, the, the technology and everything in this as well. I mean, it's not mm. paper, it looks like it, but it it's works. Just, yeah, and the filtration level it provides, yeah. Yep, and the same, same as the oil filter, like Ryker have done an absolutely phenomenal job with their oil filter. Like just to pick that filter up and hold it in your hands, you can feel the quality of it. Mm. It's nice. I know it sounds in a race car engine, you don't want things that are heavy, but that just feels like it's got strength about it. Mm. And, and you always worry about oil filters exploding, collapsing. The body on this thing is so heavy, like everything about it is just good. Yeah, and mm. I know, like speaking to Alistair about the fact that it's going to hold higher pressure, but also yes. it's not just about that, it's the amount of flow that it's getting and the filtration. Correct, correct. And mm. we've, we've, we've done a lot of testing on our dyno with, with all this stuff, and this by far is the best filter we've ever used. I can't recommend them highly enough.